Vector Math, two words that can scare away a lot of people. And for a lot of mods, you can get by just fine without ever touching it. But once you need it, you need to understand how it works. In this episode, I will not try to teach you linear algebra in three minutes. So it does assume some prior knowledge and I'll focus on how this API is different from others. If you have no experience with Vector Math, I'll put a few links in the description below. The Vector Math API includes three basic concepts. 3D vectors to represent position and direction, quaternions to represent rotation, and transforms, which represent a coordinate frame and is basically just a combination of the previous two. Just like everything else in the API, they are represented with standard Lua types. A vector is a table with three numbers, a quaternion the same but with four numbers, and a transform is just a table with a vector and a quaternion. This makes the vector math library very flexible because you can easily extend it and implement your own functions in Lua if there is something missing. But it also comes with two caveats you need to be aware of. First, since Lua indices start with one, this is how you access the x, y, and z components of a vector. x is one, y is two, and z is three. Counterintuitive for a lot of programmers, but consistent with the Lua language. The second thing you need to know about is that when you assign a table in Lua, it will create a reference, not a copy. This means that if you assign a vector, you might accidentally end up with two references to the same data, which can be very confusing and might cause hard to find bugs. To properly assign a vector, use the vec copy function. The same applies for quaternions and transforms. Let's create a small script to showcase some of the functions. We're using a simple level with a car. Now, we add a location to the scene. Locations are just world space markers that are primarily used for scripting purposes. We can retrieve the handle to our location just like we've done in the previous episodes and use that handle to get the transform of the location. We'll store the position of that transform in a global variable and use that from the tick function. To visualize the position, we can use the function debug cross, which will put a small cross at the provided world space location. The cross will only show for one frame, so we have to call this every frame from the tick function. If we drive the car around, we can see that the cross is stationary in the world. This is not surprising, but what if we want the cross to follow the car instead? In order to do so, we also need a handle to the car so we can retrieve the vehicle transform. Now we want to express the position of the location in the local coordinate frame of the vehicle. To do that, we'll use one of the transform functions. In this case, we'll use transform to local point. Local, because we want to transform from world space to local space. And point, because the vector we transform represent a position and not a direction. Note that this is done only once in the init function. This is basically a way to convert the position of the location from world space to a position in local space of the vehicle frame. In the tick function, we do the opposite, which is transform to parent point parent because we're now going from vehicle local space back into world space. Note that we have to retrieve the vehicle transform every frame in the tick function because it changes as we drive around. The cross is now following the car properly instead of being stationary in the world. Vector math is a complex topic and there are a lot of functions not covered in this video. If you want to learn more, I encourage you to read through the vector math section of the API documentation to get a feel for what's available. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at bodies and shapes and different ways to interact with them through scripting.